Hi everyone. So a bunch of us were chatting on the uh, Equipped to Endure Blog TV channel the other night about tin foil containers and boiling water in them. And uh, Adam was saying that a lot of people he talked to about it have been very, very sceptical of the idea because whenever they tried to do it, they've ended up with you know, leaking containers and they've not been able to get it working. And uh, Adam was saying he's managed to do it in the past, and I've actually managed to do it a bunch of times myself. Otherwise, I wouldn't carry tin foil around my personal survival kit. There'd be no point. Now, the real trick with this technique is to pay attention to two things. You need to pay attention to the strength of the container and the shape of it, which also indirectly contributes to the strength. It's really difficult to get um, a perfectly shaped container, a watertight container from tin foil, unless you're like an origami master or something like that, using just your hands. So the best thing to do is to use a template. Uh, I'll show you how I do that now. So I've got a piece of uh, aluminium or tin foil, whatever you want to call it, here, and it's um, it's about two feet by a foot long. It's about the size of the uh, the foil that I keep in my survival kit. So the first thing we want to do is we need to fold it up, and that's going to give it a strength. So if we fold it into roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect. If we fold it roughly. Thirds. Okay, so that basically is going to triple the strength of our foil. Now we need our template. Now, ordinarily, what we do out in the woods is we would get a, a nice thick branch and saw it to give us a nice square end, but I don't have one of those handy today, so I'm just going to use my Snow Peak Pot template. And what we do is we stick our template in the centre of our foil, and then we just build it up around the outside, stretch it in, and we need to get it as tight as we can. And just mould it around the shape of our template. The tighter we can get it, the more likely it will be to retain water without leaking. Now obviously with this thing it's not a permanent water storage mechanism. It will start to leak after a while. but it should certainly hold its shape and contain the water long enough for you to boil it and for it to cool down which is going to be the whole point of this exercise you want, to, you want to be able to purify your water using this makeshift container ok, so we have our container here and the, the good thing about this is um, also is we have these sides here which we can actually use to lift it on and off of our heat source because obviously because the, the aluminium conducts heat very very well once the water is in there and it's boiling you're not going to just be able to pick it up like that you'll, be able, you'll burn your fingers and you're not going to be able to use uh, wooden branch tongs or whatever because they will crush it which would deform the shape which means the water will come out or they may puncture a container as well so the best thing would be for you to do is to use a rag or some gloves or something like that and just hold the edge and lift it off your heat source like that. Just make sure you crimp any obvious folds that you can see in your finger because those are going to be the potential leaking points. The second method which we can use is the envelope method. Um, uh, this one's uh, really not not suitable for use on a stove or something like that. It's really only good for use over an open fire, and that's because the the shape of it is it's not really self-standing or self-supporting. So you would need to prop it up against a rock or something like that once you put it up on your embers. Now, again, the strength we do is we'll fold foil into three and that 
keeps us on our strength again. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fold it again. and keep the edges as straight as you can. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just fold the edges in and crimp them. And we're going to do this three times. Which is what we need really to make sure that we're not going to have any water leakage. Over. Do the same to the other side. Trying to keep the size of the folds quite small, though, a couple of mil at most, just so we can conserve as much of the volume of the envelope as we can for boiling our water. Okay, so we have our seals. And then simply what we would do is we would just open out our envelope like this. that's been stuck into the ground or something like that, some kind of a peg, and just prop it up against, and then you would just scoop up embers and push the embers up against the side. And then again, obviously, you can just lift it away from the heat source when you're done, when your water's boiled. Uh, another variation on this particular technique, the envelope technique, is to uh, fold it into a cone shape. And you still you still use exactly the same method to seal the edges. Um, the cone is it does have natural strength, but it has also has exactly the same drawbacks that uh, the square envelope has, in that you need some way to support it. it it's not self-standing, and I actually find that the, the rectangular envelope stands a little bit easier, or is easier to prop up, I should say, than the the cone. But yeah, that's just my personal experience. Now. The third and final way to boil water using uh, tin foil, and uh, this method is the simplest and easiest, but it also requires a little bit of planning ahead, and that is to bypass a middleman and just use a prefabricated container like this. Uh, these ones, uh, I think I paid two dollars for five, so forty cents each. A little bit of planning ahead, and you've got a preformed container that you can boil your water in and that will work on a fire or on a stove. It weighs absolutely nothing. Um, the only problem is you can't really crush it or deform it because then it will probably crack or split. But um, you can you can just throw this into the top of your pack or something like that. It will take some squishing. Just don't try and push it flat because then it, it will split and crack and it will leak now. But yeah. That's the simplest way to do it. Also the laziest. And so just to demonstrate that this does actually work, and I'm not talking out of my ass, I've filled my container with a cup of water, and I'm just gonna put it on my Vargo alcohol stove and let it boil. As you can see, there's no leaks, not dripping any water or anything. And we'll just leave that now and see how long it takes to boil. There's about a cup of water in there. Okay, so we're just coming up on nine minutes now. And as you can see, we've got a good rolling boil, which means our water is now safe to drink. Hasn't been any real deformation of the shape of the container, which is always good, especially on a direct heat like this. Top of the container is still pretty cool to touch so we can lift it off our heat source. It's 
let it cool down and then we can drink it. So as you can see, it's actually worth carrying some of this stuff around with you in your, you put it in your pack or keep it in your survival kit. It's very lightweight and it does have at least one very, very good use. Now, speaking of the uh, Equip to Endure blog TV channel, um, I would imagine that most of my subscribers here are also subscribed to Adam's channel as well. Um, but I don't know if you've had, any of you have had a chance to check out the, the blog TV yet. You may not be in the, the right time zone or whatever, but if you are, I definitely recommend that you check it out. It's on uh, every other Wednesday at 8.30 Eastern, and it's hosted by Adam and Robert Oliver. And they're both very, very knowledgeable on their particular subjects. And we, we talk about all sorts of stuff. It's always a bloody good laugh. Uh, the other night we were talking about uh, bow drill technique, and showing off the various uh, new pieces of equipment that are going to come up for a review. And they're talking about the, the shot show thing. And Robert gave us some great tips on training dogs. You know, it's just another one of those great resources out there on the internet. Uh, if you have the time, go and check it out. It's always a I hope you found this useful, as always. Thanks for watching. Any questions, queries, or problems, feel free to just leave a comment or drop me a line. Cheers.